Been a lot going on this morning, hasn't it? We're here and we're celebrating Father's Day, but I'm going to share something with y'all. I never had a father till I was in my late 20s because I, I always called my, my earthly father, I called him Daddy. I don't know if any of y'all did that, but I never went around calling my, my daddy father, but I realized what a heavenly father was truly all about in my mid-twenties whenever I asked Jesus Christ to come in my heart and save me. And whenever he saved me, then I realized what a true father is all about, and it meant something to me that I, it's hard for me to explain, and a lot of you know exactly how I feel whenever you think about that, but let me tell you something. I, to me, this is daddy's day. It's Daddy's Day, and I, I, I always think about it because I always wanted to please my daddy, my earthly daddy. And there's something that meant so much to me whenever I'd please him. I would want to please him so bad I'd sneak around and do bad whenever he wasn't around. Any of y'all have done that? I'd sneak around because I didn't want my daddy to know what I was doing, but he knew. I didn't want him to catch me doing what I was doing because he had probably tried to beat me down if he knew all the things that I was doing. But I realized that, man, I was so disrespectful in a lot of the things that I was doing and I was a disappointment to my daddy in a lot of different ways. And, and I remember going home and seeing my, seeing my mom and daddy and they was up late and I was asking them what they was doing and I come in in a way that I wasn't supposed to be coming in and I, and I asked them what was they doing and they said, we've been praying for you. I'll never forget that. But you know something, I'd, I was always holding on to things that what we Baptists always hold on to. I was holding on to whenever I was a kid and I was a child. I remember, I remember walking down an aisle at church one day. I went down that aisle in that church that, that morning, and, and I want you to know I was following one of my buddies. And one of my buddies walked down that aisle, and that, that guy stood right there, and he talked to the preacher. And, and whenever he got done, I walked up there, and the preacher asked me what was I doing, and I had no clue of what I was doing. I didn't know why I was up there other than I was following my buddy down there because I followed him everywhere he went. You know, we was, we was partners in crime, as you'd say. And so I walked down there and that, that preacher asked me, he said, do you want to be saved? And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be saved. And I want to ask you, how many of y'all have walked down an aisle like that whenever you was a kid, swears there? Uh, the rest of you, look, there's a lot of us that do that. And then all of a sudden I realized, close to 20 years later, the Lord said, I want you now as an adult. How many of y'all experienced that? As an adult, the Lord said, I want you. I want you to be saved, and I want your heart to be right. Thank the Lord that you raised your hand. And I realized that what I did at that, at that one time, I was holding on to that one time all my life, and if I would have died during all the time that I was living in that sin, I would have, I'd have went to hell. Man, hell's real, isn't it? And my, my mom and daddy would, would pray for me. And, and you know, and I was thinking, why are they praying for me? The more they prayed for me, the miserable, more miserable I got. You know why? Because they was praying for my heart to change. And I wasn't wanting to change because I had a life that I was living. And man, I was so in, such an embarrassment to them. I know I was. Because everybody would see me and they'd say, oh, are you not R.L. McKee's boy? Man, I wanted to shake my, I wasn't ashamed of my daddy, but I didn't want people to look at me and say, yeah, that's, that's R.L.'s boy. I bet he's really proud of him, isn't he? So I want y'all to know something. I, I realized that it was embarrassing looking back, and it still is. But I'm going to share something with y'all about your life of embarrassment. You ready to hear about your life of embarrassment? Every single one. Now, how many of y'all had a life of embarrassment growing up? You look around. Rest of you's lying more than likely. Because I'm going to tell you, we all have a life of embarrassment, but I'm going to tell you about the Savior. The Savior, He will wipe everything clean. Whenever I was in school, back whenever we was little bitty people, and, and most of y'all kids don't know what, a, what a, 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 a chalkboard is now. You know, they have, they have dry erase boards. That's what you have, and you go up there and everything's real clean. But whenever I was growing up, 
I'm going to tell you, we had the chalkboard. And, the, and this, is how, this was how much I wanted to get out of class all the time. I would go up there and every day I'd go up to one of the teachers. You want me to clean your erasers up? Oh, yeah, you can. I'd take those erasers out and I'd go around the corner and it looked like you was fogging up the world. And I'd hit those racers together. And you know, I'd, I'd beat those racers together and I'd look around and everything. You know why? Because I wasn't in class. You know, I wasn't nobody telling me what not to do. And I'll never forget, Miss Brooks told me, said, said, Steve, you can go and you can beat out my racers. And uh, we'll let that sit. Well, uh, <laughs> you can knock out my racers. So this day, I got out there and all of a sudden, there was a big red brick wall out there. And I took that eraser and I beat on that wall. And oh, this is how dumb. Let me tell you how dumb you preacher. Y'all know I'm dumb. But let me tell you, I tell you how dumb I was then. And I've grown in dumbness since, by the way. But I got out there and I took those erasers and I wrote my name on the, oh, I, that's dumb, right? And I popped my name on those wall right there. And wrote, I didn't write my initials. I wrote my whole name, Steve McKee. So needless to say, I, after I got a whipping and they called my daddy and I got home and I got me another one. Many of y'all can look back on your lives and you're thinking, boy, what an embarrassment I was. And I realized something, you know, but there's a but. There's a but in that. Psalms 23, 24 says this. The father of a righteous, the father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice and he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy in him. Did y'all pay attention to that? He that is a father to a righteous person. Y'all, let me go on more. And it says, And thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she shall bear thee, and shall rejoice. And my son, give thine, thine heart and thine ears, and observe my ways. See, I'm going to share something with you parents. I'm going to tell you something, Daddy. It's easy to be a good parent whenever you've got great children. It's easy. I look up there and I went and seen a uh, young man just a couple of weeks ago and I, and I told him that Kaylin made a comment that his daughter was one of the nicest people that she'd ever met in her life. And he said, oh, I have got such a good, a good daughter. And I'm going to share something with y'all. Every single one of y'all can be a great parent if you've got a great child. You know it? Matter of fact, every one of us can be a great daddy if we've, got a, if we've got a great child. And you know something, there's rules that goes along with being in a father's house. Y'all know I, I've got rules. I want you to be home whenever you're supposed to be home. I want you to act the way you're supposed to act. I want you to present to yourself the way you're supposed to present yourself. I don't want you to be a, an embarrassment. See, I was an embarrassment to my mom and daddy. And then Jesus Christ saved my soul. And then I was a joy to my mom and daddy because then I realized what that love was all about. And I praise God for my children that are coming to the house of God. I thank the Lord that whenever my children are off at college that they find them a place to go to church. I thank the Lord that whenever they move to somewhere else and start their career that they'll find them a place to go to church because we have set that example for them and that's what I expect out of them and that's the reason I ask them all the time. So I'm going to ask you daddies what kind of example are you setting for your child? Oh, Brother Steve, you shouldn't even ask me that because I want y'all to know it's important whenever you get into your Heavenly Father's house, you realize that there's rules in your Heavenly Father's house that you're supposed to abide by. Listen to what John 14, 23 says. It says, if a, man, if a man love me, Jesus is talking. He said, if a man love me, he will keep my word. See, there's something that we got to realize whenever we love Jesus Christ, we're going to keep his word. And the Bible goes on to say, and it says, and my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode or make our home with him. So I'm going to share something with you that I want y'all to realize. Come here, Beckett. Come here. All y'all laughed whenever he's smacking them shoes coming across here. That's just what Beckett does. Come here, Beckett. I want to tell y'all something about Beckett. Beckett, he don't have a whole lot of fear. He, he's not scared of much. But I'm going to tell you what it happens is. is that, go ahead. You, you hit on him. Go ahead. You want, 
There you go. I knew, I knew he was dying to do that. But I'm going to tell you, jump, Beckett. Come on, jump, jump, jump to me. All right? If y'all look at that, why don't you do it again? That wasn't good. You ready? Now, come on. Get your jump. You ready? There you go. You know, the one thing about Beckett is, is, is Beckett knows me. And Beckett knows that the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hurt him. You know why? Because, because he knows that I love him. Matter of fact, he comes to my house every once in a while, and Beckett's one of them that goes up. You can go to your mom, mom, because I'm not going, I'm not going to whip you right here in front of everybody. But Beckett's one of them that that what Beckett will do is Beckett he will he will go up to my stairs, and as he goes up to the stairs, I'm going to tell you what he'll do. He'll go up to those stairs, and Beckett's one of them that look around the corner to see if I'm looking at him. See, I've got rules at my house. Just like Jesus Christ has rules that if we love the Lord, if we love the Lord, if we say we're a child of the King and we say we love the Lord, then we've got to act like we love the Lord. So Beckett knows that there's rules in my house. Every one of my kids, before they could even swim, I would take them out there and I'd get in the water and I'd put them up on the side of that and I'd say, jump. Oh, jump. Oh, my kids, is, oh, Daddy, I don't want to jump. And they'd reach and they'd grab a hold of my hands and I'd put my finger out there and they'd squeeze those fingers with everything they had. I don't want to, I don't want to. And, and I'd finally grab their hand and I'd jerk them in. That's what a good father does, right? <laughs> but the thing about it is I want y'all to realize is it, is it wasn't that they had fear of me. They had fear of the water. See, I'm going to share something with y'all. I don't fear God. I love God. But I have fear of the consequences whenever I don't follow God the way I'm supposed to follow Him. Just like I didn't fear my daddy, I feared him some squat because I knew that there was consequences by me not following him. But the thing about it is, is I respected him and I wanted to make sure that I honored him in every way. I honored him all the way up to his death. Let me tell you something that I notice about a lot of you. I notice about a lot of you as your parents start getting older, as your parents get to where they're feeble and not able to, not able to do the things that they once was, I watch you how you honor your father and mother later on in their life. I watch how you do that, and I'm going to tell you something. Whenever you honor your father and mother as they get older, you're honoring God. Because the Bible says that you should honor your father and mother. You should love on them. I'm going to tell you something. I always wondered why in the world, why in the world do we celebrate Mother's Day like we do? All right, guys, I'm I'm just letting you know that we celebrate Mother's Day like we do, and Father's Day is just a a day to get some food. Have you ever thought about that? I'm serious. I, I think about it all the time. Whenever Mother's Day comes, oh, there's a preparation and everything. And, and you know, and, and my kids have all come home. Hey, I'm not talking about me. I'm not talking about me. My kids, I love, I love y'all. But a lot of times we get to the point in Father's Day that we, that we realize, you know, ah, oh, it's just Father's Day. It's not a big deal. I think about that a, a lot because I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you what we daddies do. We teach. We teach a lot. Sometimes we teach in the wrong kind of way. We teach our kids how to swim. And you know what we do? We throw them in the water. It's time to swim, baby. Or we pull them out whenever they're crying and we drag them down there and mama's like, don't do that. You're going to scare them to death. Well, they've got to get wet sometime. You know, that's the way we do things, don't we, daddies? Right? Act like you didn't. We get to the point that we think, uh, oh, I want to teach you how to catch this ball, and we'll throw the ball up like that. And they're like doing like this, trying to catch it. You know why? They're scared to death. Or we'll stay stand up there in that batter's box. Don't you run. Don't you run. And we'll throw that ball, and they'll back up like that. You know why? They're scared to death. But you know what we daddies are? Stay in that batter's box. Don't you be scared. You know the difference between us and mamas. We want them to do everything just like that. And mama's willing to wait 30 years if she has to. And she's still going to love them. So I'm going to share something. We, we daddies have a role too. And that role that we play is something that's, that it's important. You know something? My wife probably wouldn't have took my, my son out there and taught him how to shoot a gun. But I'm going to. That first time he shot that shotgun, he was... 
scared to death. You know why? He was supposed to be scared to death. And it kicked him real good, and, and he got his eyes watered up, and the next thing I said, let's shoot it again. It's fun, wasn't it? But you know what mom would have done? Mom said, oh, that hurts you, baby. And she'd rub on that arm. Are you okay? It's different. So I'm going to share something with y'all. Every one of you daddies, you need to know your role. You need to know what God has you here on this earth for. And I'm going to tell you what you need to do. You need to hold your children. I think if I'm not mistaken, Miss Wanda, hadn't we got, a, uh, isn't it seven or nine children that's supposed to be Seven more, seven more children that's supposed to be born in this church before the end of the year. Seven more. Man, that's good stuff. Yeah. Wow. And that was after the pandemic. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, so you sit there and you think about that. There's a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of parents in here that it's important that you stand up and be the, the kids that they need to be. But just in case you don't, I want to read you Isaiah 41, 13. Listen to what the Bible says. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand. And I'll say unto you, fear not, I'll help you. Man, that's what our Lord will tell us all the time. Because I'm going to tell you, my daddy's not here anymore either, Jim. My daddy's not here to, to help me in any kind of way, but man, my heavenly Father is. I want you all to think about something too. Got seven, seven more babies that's going to be born this year in this church and and, and every time a child is born, a daddy's born. Have you ever thought about that? And that daddy has an option. And let me tell you, mamas, they really don't have an option. They get, they, you have that baby and they pretty much say, you got to take this thing home with you. I'm not, you can't leave it here at this hospital. You got to take this baby home with you. So that mama takes that baby. They love on it. They feed it. They change it. I don't get it why these women run to change a diaper, but women do run to change a diaper. And we men look like it, look like, oh, please don't make me change that diaper. And you know something, I, I, I admire women. Man, they, I'm telling you, they can be cooking all of you men's food and they'll change a the diaper with the other hand. You know it. And y'all say y'all won't change a diaper. You think about that a little bit, guys. I want y'all to realize that it's important what we do. But let me tell you something. We men, we have, an, we have a choice. We have a choice. Let me tell you what your choice is. You can be the kind of daddy that'll be a great daddy or you can be a sorry daddy if you choose to. You can be a sorry daddy. You can be a selfish daddy. You know something? You can be a, a daddy that's present, that you're there all the time. You coach their little league ball and you play catch with them and you teach them how to swim and shoot. Or you can be the daddy that's absent, that you're just not there. Oh, you're trying to make a living and, and bring more things to that family. What are you trying to bring to that family? You need to be bringing the love and compassion and tenderness. You might say, Bro, Steve, I didn't come here on Father's Day to get priests like this. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You can also be the type of person that you can, uh, you can be absent or you can hug somebody. You can hate or you can smile. You can fuss. You can complain. You can be whatever kind of daddy you want to be, but I'm going to tell you something. Let me share something with y'all. I want you to pay attention. That young man that's taking that baby and he's taking him to the bathroom. He was listening to the message, wasn't he? Yeah. But that, that little fella right there, Tripp, I'm going to tell you, he's only got one reference point of what a daddy truly looks like. And it's his. Every single one of you that are a man, a young man and a young woman of God, the only reference point, my son right there, the only reference point that he has of what a daddy is supposed to look like, boys, is they look at their daddy. They're going to look at their daddy. Does that daddy love his mama? Does that daddy uh, uh, bring home the things that he needs to bring home? Does he love him? Does he get in the floor and play with him? Does he roll with him? And then we become granddaddies. And whenever we become granddaddies, are we being that, that example, that role model that we're supposed to? I saw you, Dwayne, whenever I seen you playing with that boy in the house. Had a, had a, just had shoulder surgery and that little fellow was bringing him a ball and he'd throw that ball. I knew he didn't feel like throwing a ball, but he played ball with that boy, bounced it up against the wall and they played. I'm talking about just all the time. Let me tell you what a daddy does. A daddy's at home loving on that child. Hey, if you've got enough food to eat, you're doing great. 
If you've got a, a house, you're doing great. But I'm going to tell you something. There's pressure. There is pressure on being a daddy. And I'm going to tell you something, ladies, that I want y'all to realize. It's a, man, sometimes it's bad. Some of y'all may be saying, Brother Steve, you know something? My daddy, my daddy was mean to me. My daddy was a bad daddy. Then change it. Change it in your mind. Change it in your heart. And you make sure that you don't turn into your daddy if your daddy was a bad one. If your daddy was a good one, I'm going to tell you what you do. You take all the good that he has and you make it even better. And you be a better daddy than what your daddy was. You make sure, listen, have, how many of y'all have heard on the news right now that we're having a decline, a decline in our nation? How many of y'all heard it? Every one of you, you're all watching it. They're saying it's a decline, a moral decline, a spiritual decline, a physical decline. I'm going to tell you what's happening. If we take what we know and how we're supposed to act and how we're supposed to love and we enhance it and we make sure that we're being the mom and daddy that we're supposed to be doing, I'm going to tell you, one of these days, our children are going to grow up and hopefully they'll change the whole world by the way that they live for God. And I'm going to share something with you. We're supposed to change the world one person at a time. We've got a baptism today. I want y'all to know we had a baptism last week. I think we baptized six the week before. We're going to have a couple of baptisms next week. And I'm going to share something with you. You sit here and you, and you, and you, you say, how do you know that, Brother Steve? I'm the preacher, man. I'm supposed to know that stuff. There's people who are steadily getting saved. And as long as we can see people being saved, let me share something with y'all. As long as we can see people being saved, I'm going to tell you, Jesus is not going to come back until that last person, the Bible says that that last person is going to accept Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, and God's going to say, Jesus, you go get my church. You bring my church on home to me. See, I'm going to tell you right now, we're worried about all this old world and everything that's going around in it whenever the Lord God is sitting there saying, I've got this now. I've got this preacher, Steve. Don't you be worried about this world that you're living in because I've got it under control, okay? Man, our God's got this stuff. Whenever I read about that, you know, you might say, ladies, I want y'all to know something. The weight and responsibility of being a daddy is tough. Oh, Brother Steve, that's so silly that you'd tell me that. We got to cook. We got to clean. We got to change diapers. We got to feed these babies. We got to, yes, I, let, me, let me share something with y'all. You're looking at it from a woman's role. Let me tell you about a daddy's role. A daddy wants to have that house that you can go in, that you can have that picket fence around it. I don't know why people want a picket fence around the house. But people want to picket fence around the house so you can weed eat around it, you can round up around it, you can, you can work yourself to death. And then we want some flower beds to go out in the front. You know why? So we can get mulch to go all over that flower bed. We got to trim those bushes. We got to crate murders that's that tall. And then we, oh, and then we cut those things down and then we've got to haul them out like this. We work ourselves to death. Whenever I want you to know something about what these men want to have. These men want to, want to be able to live right around their family. They want to provide for their family. Let me share something with you. God brought women into this world to love on people. And God made us men to where we're supposed to be providers. We're supposed to be the, the person that comes up that, mm, I'm man. And I'm going to share something with you. There's a lot of responsibility around that. Let me share something with you. Whenever, whenever we found out that we was having Kalen, I started selling everything. I was so scared. Any of y'all, any of y'all other daddies did that? Just scared to death? Oh man, I'm glad y'all are as dumb as I was. Yeah. And I and I realized that that really, whenever we got her, really all she was is a. As, a, as a, you know, give her some milk and, and a little bit of food and get her some diapers and put her in some cute clothes and why you mamas put those bands around those children's head? I don't get it, but anyway, that's another fight that we had. But I, I realize, with all my heart, I realize that it didn't cost much to raise a child. All that child needed was those two people at home with them. They needed you to love them. They needed you to, to play with them, throw that ball. See, there's a lot of things that children need, and I'm going to tell you what they need, Daddy. They need you. They need you home. So I want to share something with you that it's important to, 
every bit of that stuff that I was talking about, the stability, the cars as they go and grow up, the money, all those things you just kind of panic over. But they really need love. And y'all, let me share something with you. There's a lot of daddies that crumbles like cookies. Man, they get a little bit of trial in their life and it's just, man, they're just dust like that. And there's others that stand up and they're so strong. See, I'm going to share something with you and I'm about done. Families, they need a, a spiritual head of the household. They need somebody who's, a, who's going to be there all the time. And just because, men, just because you're there physically, it don't mean that you're there spiritually. It'd be like you sitting there uh, and you're propped up in your chair and you got that remote in your hand and, and uh, I want to apologize to Carrie again. And she's there talking to you and, and you're, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And she says that you're not listening to the word that she says. And I always, this is what makes her good and mad and I don't blame her. She, I said, I can repeat every word. And she said, yeah, but you wasn't listening. Y'all, I'm going to tell you something, man. We got to make sure. We got, see, the good thing about Father's Day is I get to preach to the preacher so much. The good thing about Father's Day is that, is that I, I'm, I'm one of them, and I realize that there's, there's responsibilities that comes along with it. But I'm going to tell you something. Our Lord is always present. Hey, if some of you have had a bad, bad uh, upbringing, change it. Boy, my life has been hard. Change it. You know something, Brother Steve? I, I struggle even today. Change it. But let me tell you about our Lord. Y'all ready to hear? I got one more scripture and I'm done. Psalm 68, 5 says, He is the father to the fatherless and a defender of the widows. And it's God that's in His holy habitation. See, I want y'all to know something. I want y'all to make your heart a place for the Lord Jesus Christ to live. I want you, men, I know you came here because you might have been asked or they might have been an occasion, but I, I want you to know something. You came here not by accident. You came here because, because the Lord wants you to give your heart to Jesus Christ. Teenage young men, young girls, the reason that you're here is not because grandma or granddaddy or mom and daddy ask you. You're here because Jesus Christ wants to save your soul this morning. He wants to change your life forever. He wants to make you to live that life for Jesus. See, I'm going to share something with you. Just like Beckett was standing up here earlier and, and I said, Beckett, jump. And you know something? It never crossed his mind not to jump because he knew I was going to catch him. Let me tell you something about you. It's time for some of you to jump and realize that Jesus Christ is going to catch you. Make sure you know him. Because if he, hey, if these last two that saved this morning or these last ten that saved this morning are the last one, I'm going to tell you, Jesus is going to come back. And are you ready? Dear Lord, I come to you. And God, my prayer is that every individual in here, that they search their heart. God, there'll be people that may go to the altar with their families. They might be men who that's, that's not stood up the way they're supposed to. God, my prayer is, is that you find us faithful this morning. I don't care who they are. I pray if they don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that they get their heart right with him today before it's too late. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. As we stand.